I am Eva, and this is my story. I have a sister named Ivy. We have always been active kids since childhood. We often took part in sports during high school. My sister Ivy is a professional gymnast. Needless to say, she has a strong build and can be quite competitive to many grown-ups. Last year, I applied to the same college where my sister is now a senior. Our father died when we were very young. We have been raised by our grandparents and our mother. Ivy and I have always been the adventurous types. I still remember when I was just five years old and Ivy was seven. We used to roam around on our own. One night, we went to the woods and a wild dog chased me. Instead of running away and crying out loud, Ivy and I scared it off by throwing stones at it. We have always been a team, but sometimes too much of curiosity can ruin your life. This is exactly the kind of incident that taught both of us a lesson to remember forever. On my first day of college, I was super excited, like every other young girl. Especially, I was relieved to have my sister to watch my back. Our college was really big. Young boys and girls were roaming in the entire college with joyful faces and a heart full of dreams. Ivy introduced me to her friends and her boyfriend, Mark. I made a couple of friends on my own too, but during the weekends, I liked to hang out with my sister and her group. Similarly, on Saturday night, Ivy held a party at her place. Around 1 a.m., all of her friends left for home. Her boyfriend, Mark, asked if he should stay over, but Ivy said we are going to drink more and have some sister time. Mark smiled and said, Have fun, you guys, and don't do something dangerous, Ivy. He left then. I asked my sister, Why did he say that before leaving? Ivy laughed and said, You know me, Eva. I joked around a lot in my first years. My friends even called me Miss Prankster. We shared a laugh because Ivy is actually like that. We sat down on the couch and opened our beer bottles. I shared how my friends were talking about the dark web a few days back. I suddenly saw Ivy's face lighting up with a smile. She said, Hey Eva, wanna play a game on the dark web? I said in an awkward tone, Um, what game? She replied, It's a treasure hunt game. I've played this game once within my first year, but this is a very grooving game. Basically, after you log in, the game will map your location, then a clue will appear. By solving each clue, you will go ahead in the game. At the final round after solving the last clue, you will receive a coordinate that will lead you to your treasure. It'll be a destination near your location. We have to go there and look at the exact place instructed by the game, and there we will find our treasure. Let's play, it'll be fun. I said in a suspicious voice, did you guys actually find any treasure earlier? Ivy said in a low voice, Last time, we found a coordinate leading us to an abandoned garage. There, we found $1,000 in an old toolbox. We have no idea who kept it. Even though those notes were rusty and old, we exchanged them in a pawn shop and got brand new notes. We drank a lot in the pub with cash. Being honest, this game got me interested. I mean, it was a real life treasure hunt after all. I immediately agreed to Ivy and we decided to play the game together. Ivy logged into her laptop. As she opened the game page, a dark layout flashed in front of our eyes. There was a human skull that had a tagline. You will never be able to guess the treasure. The game started with a man standing in a dark alley. We had to move the character towards the end of the alley. The end had a wooden door. As we opened the door, a small girl with a smashed face stood inside the room. I must say, even though it was game graphics, at that time of the night, the girl's face kind of creeped me out. The girl was singing in a very spooky voice. The music playing in the background added to the horror of this game. The game was nothing like a normal treasure hunt. It felt as if some cult group has designed the game. There were bizarre satanic signs made on the walls of the corridors. Not just the get up of the game, but also the clues were hella scary. For example, a clue read, the little girl who stares at you never sleeps. When she cries, her eyes bleed. Every clue revealed the other characters in the game, and each game gave us a double-digit number. Ivy told me, Note down this number. These are the coordinates. The game went on for half an hour more, and we finally reached the last character, which was a ram-like figure sitting on a throne. It was probably Satan himself. I said, This game is very weird. I don't like at all the look of this game. Ivy smirked at me and said, Well, sis, this is the dark web. Not just some random PC gaming site. Ivy clicked on the last character, and the ram-like figure spoke in its demonic voice. You have reached your end. Now it's time for your reward. 
The last digit of the coordinate appeared on the screen, and the game ended. Before Ivy could log out from the page, suddenly her laptop crashed. She said in a surprised voice, What the hell? This didn't happen last time. No matter how much we tried, her laptop stopped responding. I said in a scared voice, Some of my friends told me these dark websites are prone to virus attacks. I don't think you should go there anymore. Ivy restarted the laptop, but she couldn't find the game anymore. Anyways, we turned it off and I said, I'm tired now. I better get some sleep. Ivy got up and said, What do you mean? You can't sleep now. We have to go to the destination. Come on, buckle up. I looked at my watch. It was 2.30 a.m. at night. I said in a tensed voice, Um, Ivy, I don't think it's safe to go out to some unknown destination at this hour of the night. Ivy looked at me with her drunk eyes and said, Come on, kiddo. Gather your shit together. I had no other way than to go with my sister. I knew she was not going to back out once she has made up her mind. We hopped inside the car and Ivy put the coordinates from the gate in her GPS. The destination was 15 minutes distance from our location. For some extra info, my sister's place is already in the outskirts of the city. The location that popped up was taking us to some barren field-like area. I was really worried thinking this can be some kind of a trap or God knows what. So I secretly texted Ivy's boyfriend, Mark, who happened to live nearby our house. Luckily, Mark was still awake. He texted me back saying he will reach there soon. After a small bridge, we came near an abandoned farmhouse. There were vast fields around us, and the old farmhouse stood like a haunted house from a freaking ghost movie. Ivy got out and lit up her flashlight. I had no other choice than to follow her. We locked the car and started to walk towards the farmhouse. As soon as we reached near the door, we heard car horns honking nearby. I was relieved to see Mark's car. Mark got out and rushed towards us with an angry face. He hurled at Ivy saying, Grow up, Ivy. This is not a time to joke around. Let's go back home. Enough is enough. Ivy looked at me with a pissed off face and replied, You two are very boring. I will go back home once I check this farmhouse. As I already said, my sister was adamant at that time. We got inside and realized this farmhouse has faced a severe fire. The walls and the wood were black and filled with cobwebs. Mark said, I'm telling you, there's no treasure here. Let's go. Ivy suddenly reached near a bumpy surface and said, This is the exact coordinate. I'm telling you guys, there's something under the ground buried here. Let's dig it up. I knew without watching what was under the ground. My sister is not going back. So Mark picked up an iron rod lying in the corner and started to dig. After a few minutes of digging, the iron rod hit onto a plastic-like thing. We discovered a black garbage bag underneath. Ivy went to open the bag with an excited face, but as soon as she saw what's inside, she screamed and fainted on the ground. Mark and I found a bloody knife and some blood-soaked clothes in it. We went to the cops the next morning. The cops found out it was evidence from a murder case that the killer tried to hide. I haven't kept track of this incident further because it was utterly disturbing. Ivy is now scared of playing any kind of video game. She never went to the dark web after that incident.